young generation for their benefit should learn from our tragedy. Because what happened once to us can happen again. The only alternative is tolerance. Wiesenthal toured the new center this morning with Governor Brown. In 1977, the Simon Wiesenthal Center was founded in Los Angeles to build on the vision of the legendary Nazi hunter. It's true that the Nazis, their principal targets, were the Jews. But bigots, if you leave it up to them, on a Tuesday it may be the Jews, and on a Wednesday it'll be somebody else. So we're all in this together. Over the past 30 years, six satellite offices have been opened, and the center has grown into one of the most influential human rights organizations in the world. The largest satellite office here in New York City was opened in 1981. There's something unique to the Wiesenthal Center that we belong in New York. We just were the testing ground in being the largest satellite to do what was being done in California on a smaller scale. But in New York, Philadelphia, Boston, and we spread our wings with a very small staff. Welcome to our 17th annual dinner in New York. To accept such an award, especially one which carries the great name of Simon Wiesenthal on its banner, is a formidable lesson in modesty. I think we've had a particularly stellar group in New York. It's extremely worthwhile in what they've done in the area of human rights, humanitarian issues. But you let me in, Irish rock star. Wow. I'm particularly delighted with this award because it's named after a man who made it his mission to see that the evils we know about should never again be inflicted on mankind. You see a civilian die, a Jewish civilian, oh, the Jewish man died. It's a great honor to kill one of these people. I think the Simon Wiesenthal Center is more necessary than it's ever been before. Because if you look around the world, you see an increasing number of conflicts that are generated because of people's identity with a group and their friction with another group. So at a very basic level, the root of a lot of the conflict in this world right now is because people are intolerant. We thought it would never happen again, but it happens, and it has happened, and it is happening. My grandmother is a Holocaust survivor. My father was a Holocaust survivor. My, uh... The latest addition to the Wiesenthal family, Generations Against Genocide, was founded by children and grandchildren of Holocaust survivors, drawing upon the lessons of the Holocaust to bring attention to the plight of genocide victims worldwide. You know, Simon spoke out against the Cambodian genocide and the Rwandan genocide and what was going on in Bosnia and Rwanda. But he did not live long enough to speak out against Darfur. We, as second and third generations, should pick up where he left off. In 1995, there was one hate site on the internet. Today, the center carefully monitors thousands each year. With the advent of the internet, hate changed from revisionism against the Holocaust. We had the neo-Nazi groups. This office became the research part of our CD-ROM and digital hate. The crown jewel of the New York office's work is the Tolerance Center, a one-of-a-kind multimedia training and education facility in the heart of Manhattan. We're building something here. We're building something where people will learn, people will be educated, they'll understand racial intolerance, they'll understand their own personal prejudices and how they deal with that. We train three main sectors, law enforcement and criminal justice professionals, educators and teenagers, gatekeepers of the culture. We pray for the salvation of all the dead. the power of words. What we're looking at there is the use of language to either be constructive or destructive. The words have consequences to me, it means that like, what you say can lead to good or to bad. 
From there, we look at the power of images. What we're trying to do with that exhibit is get people reflecting on how stereotypes are created and perpetuated through the use of media. It makes it seem like they come to this country not to work hard, not to raise their children, and give their family a better way, but in order to take advantage of our social programs. So a lot of times... I thought intolerance was basically kind of something that happened basically in the 1950s and stuff. Oh, it makes me feel kind of lucky to not be born back then, to be born now. Because if I would have been born back then, I don't, seriously, I don't think I would have made it. Today, our law enforcement group is involved in a program called Perspectives on Profiling. That course is really looking at the difference between illegal racial profiling and proper law enforcement practices. And what did he say about these three African Americans? We're dealing with the problem, very much like every day we're dealing with different cultures, different backgrounds, and I think it's very important because if you do not have the training on it, these things would affect me, but now I know better because now I'm, getting, I'm being educated as a law enforcement officer. Because they had no home for either mentally or physically handicapped people. The poor innocent children Many of the survivors that speak to our classes for young people were very young themselves during the Holocaust. They put a human face on the Nazi Holocaust. I was just in shock, like, hearing what she went through, hearing what all the other people went through just because they were Jewish. So it kind of, like, surprised me on how people can hate each other for no apparent reason. I say to the young people, we don't have to like each other, we don't have to love each other, but we have to learn to respect each other. I think what is lacking a lot, even in our society, that we have forgotten how to respect each other. I think it, like, it scared me a lot. It made me realize that this, can, this isn't over, like this could happen to us, like there could be something like this happening to Americans. I can't be anything but an optimist because we can make the world better, one person at a time. You know, to repairing everything at one time? No, that's not going to happen. But if you start small with our young people today and get them started young, then hopefully they won't be turned into the haters of tomorrow. Revenge is a human feeling. And after a time, we have enough. It's like food. We cannot eat the whole day. You cannot hate the whole day.